So if you've heard a lot about progressive web apps and Microsoft, what's the deal with it? Well, today we'll do a deep dive and answer a lot of questions submitted by a user. Stay tuned. All right, so what is exactly a PWA? Well, the idea goes back to 2015 in an article written by Alex Russell, who's a Google engineer. And there he outlined the requirements for progressive web applications. Since then, the whole industry has been working towards PWAs by integrating this into their browsers. So Google Chrome supports it now, and Edge will be supporting it at Redstone 4. And yes, even Safari is getting a version of it in 11.3 later on this year. Now, what makes a progressive web app unique is its ability. So for the first time, these web applications can work offline and in the background. And that's done through a thing called service workers. And you'll hear a lot of these. You can think of them as little guys that work in the background. They pull in notifications. It also caches material, and that's how it works offline. There's also no Chrome here, meaning not the Chrome browser, but when you launch a PWA, it doesn't look like you're in the browser. It looks like it's an application. It's actually kind of eerie how it works, but you don't get the browser controls. It's just standard web application stuff. That's what makes these things really compelling is when you're using them, it's really hard to tell the difference. For instance, Instagram have a PWA. So if you go to Instagram.com on your Android phone, assuming it's a modern one, and you log in, you'll be asked if you want to pin this to your start screen or your application screen, and would you like to receive notifications? Once you do that and then you open that app, it looks just like the regular Instagram application. In fact, the scrolling is better than a native app of Android, which tells you a lot. Why does Google Microsoft see this as the future of app development? All right, I've talked about this more in the past before, but let's rehash some of these ideas. Microsoft back in build 2015 talked about this idea too, that applications don't have much longevity. That is what are called long tail applications. Things you launch on occasion. So I'm not talking about your email app necessarily or things you launch every day or heavy things like games. What I mean is like, say you wanna order flowers or you wanna call up an Uber. These are nice to have as applications, but you're not using them all the time. It gets real expensive to maintain these apps. Now, a company like Uber is really not starved for cash, so let's put them aside. But let's talk about maybe your local diner or your local car shop. Now, on average, it probably takes around forty-five dollars to $50,000 if you want to hire a dedicated app developer. Now, some work on a partial fee per month to maintain the app, while others just require a flat-out salary. 50000 a year is not cheap at all, especially if you're a local diner. In fact, that's kind of cost prohibitive. So it's very expensive for small organizations to make an application, especially if they want to put it on iOS and Android. Remember, most devs still target iOS first with Android coming second, despite the fact that Android is the larger market share. So this really comes down to an issue of cost. But there's actually a little bit more going on here. For instance, why is Google pushing this? They have a pretty awesome store the last time I checked. Well, it's actually a really good point. Google's business model, though, is actually on the web. It's not really the app store, nor is it selling Android devices. Android is really about you getting to use Google services and going on the web. If every company created their own native application and it pulls data direct from the site without going through the web, well, that actually hurts Google's bottom line. Don't forget, apps really don't count against web traffic. So Google actually wants this to happen because in using a progressive web application, you're using the web, you're using analytics, you're using their ad stuff. You're getting everything to count against SEO as well, so it shows up in search. So this all benefits Google. They don't really care about the App Store in that sense. What they want are people back on the web. So not only does this extend the life of the World Wide Web, if you want to use a data term, but it actually gives it more life. It gives it actually a new lease going into 2018, 2019. Now as to why Microsoft wants it, I think it should be pretty obvious. They have the app gap problem, and this potentially solves that. How will PWAs affect the Microsoft Store? All right, so Microsoft recently talked about this and it's really interesting. And this is the difference with PWAs. Right now, if you're say on an Android device and you open your Chrome browser or even Edge browser and you go to twitter.com, like I said, log in, it'll ask you to pin it to the app screen. The problem there is you can still have the Instagram app installed and then have a PWA installed as well, living side by side. And there's sort of a discoverability issue. 
Now, I'm not really sure here what Google is going to do or even Apple is going to do regarding PWAs in their stores. What I can tell you is what Microsoft is going to do. They're going to put PWAs directly into the store. And how they do this is through the Universal Windows platform. They basically have a bridge that supports this. So they're taking PWA, wrapping it in the AppX wrapper, putting it into the store, but they also get other features there. For instance, you get live tiles, you can get Cortana, you can get in-app purchases if there were those there. You also get deeper analytics. You get discoverability because the consumer is going to basically launch the app store or the Microsoft store. They're going to search for, say, Uber or Twitter, and guess what's going to be there? An application. Now, it's going to be technically PWA, but will the consumer know? Uh, no, because there's no Chrome. They're not launching this. It doesn't look like a web browser. It looks like an application. But there's more to this. So how are you going to get PWAs in the store? Do they have to go to each company and go, can we do this? No, they don't. Since these are just websites, all they're doing is putting websites in the store. They don't need their permission. And Microsoft has already said they're going to use a thing called Bing Crawler. They've been looking at PWA sites that are live right now. And if they meet certain standards, they're going to be putting these in the store automatically. So we can expect probably a couple hundred, I don't know, maybe even a thousand of these things to all of a sudden show up in the store. And then once it gets even more advanced, that is the quality is there and they get user feedback and this is working well, Bing Crawler will be able to package these things up and put it into the store automatically with no one there. Now, since no money is being transpired here, Microsoft is not making money on ads through these things. It's all just pulling in a website from a company. There's no reason there that a company needs its permission. Twitter is Twitter. If Twitter wanted to deny a PWA on Windows 10, they'd be effectively saying, you can't go to Twitter.com on your web browser, which would be insane. And so this is the big difference here. Microsoft is treating PWAs as first-class citizens, as they say. They're putting them right in the store, and it's going to be right there for users so without the discoverability problem of having go to the website, log in, and then pin it to your start screen. It's a very unique thing, and it should be happening for Redstone 4 in the coming weeks. Are there any big-name brand apps out there that are PWAs? And are developers embracing this? So the answer here will surprise you, maybe not, I don't know, but there are a lot of PWAs already out there, including Google Maps. Yes, this already works in Edge on Android. You can pin it to your start screen and have a PWA of Google Maps that uses your location and works just like the app itself. That means in theory, yes, Project Andromeda will have Google Maps, which is really enticing. But there are other ones out there. Starbucks has a preview version. If you go to preview.starbucks.com on your phone, you can see it there and log in and pin it that to your start screen, and that is a PWA as well. You also have Twitter, you have Instagram, you have Tinder, you have Uber, you have Lyft. You have a bunch of services already out there. Even Pinterest has a PWA. So yes, all the major companies are embracing this because again, companies hate paying developers, sorry. They would rather just have a web developer basically make a PWA website and call it a day. I also expect a lot of banks to jump on this because maintaining a banking app is super expensive. There's a lot of security involved. There's a lot of laws in effect that they need to be compliant with. That's one reason why Windows 10 always had an issue with banking apps. They're very expensive to maintain. But what is always maintained? A banking website. In fact, that gets updated even before any iOS and Android app. So if a bank can maintain a PWA website, well, that's a win-win for everybody, including them and their consumers and, yes, eventually Windows 10 users. Does Microsoft have any plans to release any of its apps in PWA form? Our set of questions a little confusing, and I'll tell you why. A PWA has to be thought of as first living on the web. But I can tell you of one instance as an example, Outlook.com. So Outlook.com is both an email service that's on the web, but of course there are apps for it. Now, is Microsoft going to take its app and convert to PWA? No. What they did do, though, was convert Outlook.com into supporting PWA. So again, launch your Android phone up use Chrome, use Edge, and go to Outlook.com, and now add that to your home screen and relaunch it, and you're going to quickly see it looks just like an Outlook app. It's very impressive. It is full PWA compliant. So Microsoft will take any of their services that live on the web and convert those to PWA. So I imagine OneDrive is there as well, and there are other services. I haven't tried them all, but yes, Microsoft is definitely on board here with making its websites PWA compliant. Does Microsoft Edge even support PWAs yet? All right, so if you're running Windows 10 Fall Creators Update, the answer is no, but don't worry. Redstone 4, which is slated for spring 2018, or actually in a couple weeks, 
will be supporting PWA right out the door. That's also when Microsoft's going to start putting some of these PWA websites into the store as a test. And as they get feedback, we'll roll out more using that Bing crawler. So yeah, look for it very soon. Now, PWA, as I should explain, is still very new. Uh, that's why, for instance, Starbucks has a preview of it and Twitter has Twitter Lite. So a lot of this stuff is basically in development. Google themselves aren't really launching their PWAs until around mid-2018. So look for this technology to ramp up. And don't forget, it's 1.0. So for instance, the Instagram app does a lot of cool stuff already. You can double tap to like something. It has very good scrolling but it doesn't do all the things necessarily. You can access even the camera, which is kind of unique. Uh, these things are very powerful, but they're not necessarily as powerful as apps, but that will change as PWAs progress and improve over time. And finally, I know one question I'm going to be hearing a lot about is, will Windows Phone support Edge with PWAs? I don't believe so. I don't know what Microsoft's plans are here. I'm doubtful that they're going to actually update Edge on the phone to support PWAs, which is a bit of a shame, but we don't know. They could do it if they want to, but they really are kind of done with phone at this time. Since PWAs are web apps, do developers even need an app store taking a 30% cut? So I touched upon this a little bit earlier. If your website is free to access, it's Outlook.com, it's Uber, it's Twitter, it's Lyft, uh, LinkedIn, there is no cut, right? I mean, if your app is free on the store, Microsoft's not really taking a cut. And I already described earlier how Microsoft's gonna put these websites on their store automatically without necessarily asking those companies to do so because all they're doing is linking to that website after all. So there's no changing of money here, which is why legally they can even do this. So. What stores are really good for is what we all know is discoverability. The idea is you want to open up, say, Windows 10 for the first time out of your out-of-box experience. You want to hit that store and be like, I want Uber or I want my banking app. Type it in and it shows up, you hit install and it downloads. Sure, everybody knows you can just launch the browser and do that, but this is gonna be a containerized version of that. And what's really neat about the PWA stuff in the store is technically the app never needs to be updated since it's pulling down live data from the store and it can live in a cache offline. All it depends on is that website being updated. So the consumer really wins out here as well too. Finally, how long do you think it will be until PWAs are the standard and not the exception? Making predictions about new technology is always difficult, especially standards, and this is a 1.0 after all, but I expect PWAs to catch on pretty fast. Like I said, I already listed a bunch of major sites that are already supporting it, and technically it hasn't launched yet, at least not in an official capacity. So. We are seeing a lot of uptake from developers with this. In fact, I get asked a lot of questions from devs about this topic all the time. I do expect going to 2019, you're going to see a lot of this. Now, what really matters is how the stores basically adopt PWA. So we know Microsoft is going full blast with it, and that's gonna be very good for the technology. I'm not sure what Google's policy is gonna be here. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear more about it at Google I.O. coming up in May. And I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to put PWAs in their store as well. Moreover, I could see Twitter or Instagram, for instance, basically saying we're going to put our PWAs in the store and replace their current apps with it. In fact, Twitter just announced that they're deprecating their app for Mac OS. Why is that? It's PWA, folks. There is just no point in Twitter making apps for all these platforms. And if you've used a Windows 10 Twitter app, you could probably see where this is going as well. I can also imagine that app being deprecated and replaced instead with Twitter PWA. I think this technology is gonna come very quickly and there's one reason, it's money. Companies just don't want to pay developers to make and maintain these applications. It's also a platform neutral system, and it's a win-win for almost everyone involved except maybe app developers on iOS and Android. In fact, I think this will probably hurt Apple devs the most because if PWA actually goes into the store for iOS, those devs get paid a lot of money and they're in high demand and they won't necessarily have as much work. Moreover, Apple would lose a lot of revenue potentially as they don't necessarily get to cut a lot of those apps either. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. But yeah, expect PWA to be a big deal in 2018. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that deep dive into PWAs. If you have more questions, leave them in comments and we'll try to answer them. I'd like to thank Rance P for submitting all those questions to me. It really helped me give a structure to this talk. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody.